This is Matthew Cratter's Bitcoin University. Today I want to talk about some Bitcoin soft fork essentials. And I know that I promised a BIP 110 soft fork client tutorial today, but I've decided to hold off temporarily after DMing with Dathan Ohm. I've been running Bitcoin Knots release candidate, this BIP 110 UASF release candidate number two, using my Start9 personal server as I showed you yesterday. But Dathan is now recommending that we wait until release candidate number three is ready and packaged up for everyone to use on Start9 and Umbral and as a standalone client, which will probably take another week or two. So you can get progress updates by following Dathan Ohm on X. And as soon as it's practically possible, I will show you a tutorial so you can start running and signaling for this UASF. The good news is that this delay gives us more time to discuss the ins and outs of soft forks and to prepare ourselves. So we should probably start again with what's a Bitcoin soft fork. It's a form of a Bitcoin protocol rule change where nodes start running software that enforces new rules across the network. And there are two kinds of forks. There are soft forks, there are hard forks. Soft forks narrow the rules while hard forks widen the rules. So here's a completely made up example. Let's say that Bitcoin blocks have always come in two colors. And again, this isn't true, but for the sake of example, let's say that Bitcoin blocks have always come in two colors, red blocks and blue blocks. A possible soft fork could be designed that would enforce the following new rule. Quote, no more blue blocks. Historical blue blocks may remain in the blockchain, but no new blue blocks will be accepted by nodes. As of the activation date, Bitcoin nodes will only accept red blocks. That could be a soft fork proposal. And that's a narrowing of the rules. So it's a soft fork. Whereas nodes used to accept both blue blocks and red blocks, they now narrow the rules and only accept red blocks. Now, the nice thing about soft forks is that they're backwards compatible for users. If you're a node runner and you're Rip Van Winkle or in a coma, you can keep running your old node client software and even if you sleep for 20 years. However, if you are producing new blocks like miners do, you'll only be allowed to produce red blocks going forward. And if you produce a blue block, nodes that are running the new rules will not accept the blue block and will not add it to their individual versions of the Bitcoin blockchain. And so as a miner, you'll, you will have spent over $300,000 mining that block and have nothing to show for it. So that's what a soft fork looks like. By contrast, hard forks widen the rules. So a hard fork proposal could be this, quote, continue to accept blue and red blocks for miners and also start accepting green blocks. That would be a widening of the rules. This widens the rules, forces all node runners to upgrade or risk finding themselves part of a completely different network. You'll be on a completely different network if you don't start accepting green blocks. That's one reason why Bitcoiners try to avoid doing hard forks, while ship coins like Ethereum or Cardano do hard forks all the time. If you're finding this video helpful so far, I'll just pause really briefly here to ask you to help to support this channel. Hit the subscribe button. That does really help to get the message out. Leave a like, leave a comment, question, suggestion for a future video, and share this video with a friend or family member. Now, Ethereum and Cardano are able to do hard forks so easily because they're highly centralized projects where whatever Vitalik Buterin or Charles Hoskinson decree becomes the new rule set and becomes the new consensus. Ethereum has undergone numerous hard forks for network upgrades with key ones including Homestead, Byzantium, Constantinople, Istanbul, Berlin, London, Shanghai, and recent ones like Petra and Fusaka. Same with Cardano. They've done 10 major hard forks to date and a few minor ones. Now, an easy way to tell the Bitcoin is much less centralized than anything like Ethereum or Cardano is that it's incredibly difficult and time consuming to do a soft fork, much less a hard fork. Bitcoin Core is currently somewhat centralized as a cabal and they seem to move together as this organism, but even Core doesn't have the power to push through a fork in the same way that a Vitalik or a Hoskinsid could easily do it. Even soft forks can be extremely risky and should never be attempted lightly. That's what we should say at the outset here. We're still dealing with the consequences of the Taproot soft fork of 2021 and the Segwit soft fork of 2017, especially the unintended consequence of the combination of Taproot and Segwit opening up the network to endless spam attacks where the attacker even gets a fee discount thanks to SegWit. And also the Taproot soft fork by itself has been mostly a disaster. Let's hear what Samson Mao has to say about it. Because if you look at Taproot, like we rushed to activate Taproot. It was a major emergency um, because we want to have signature aggregation. Where's the signature aggregation? I don't know. I don't see it. Do you? Nope. So that's one problem with Taproot. Things were promised and they weren't really 
ended up being used. I'll put this link to, a link to uh, Jimmy Song's video here about whether Taproot was a wise decision. He has a similar take on it. And then we have Ghost of Unhosted Marcellus writing here, 90% of all Taproot UTXOs, in other words, chunks of still spendable Bitcoin, 90% of all Taproot UTXOs hold less than 1,000 sats, i.e. their leftover dust from inscription. So this particular soft fork, which is Taproot, has been a bit of a disaster. It was really the CAT soft fork that was recently proposed. That's one effort to clean up all this historical Taproot spam, dust, UTXOs, and purge them from the UTXO set. So if you want to learn more about the CAT, I'll put a link to all these different videos in the description notes below. One final distinction to understand while we're talking about forks, you have a UASF, which stands for User Activated Soft Fork. This is one that's activated by Bitcoin node runners. And then you have an MASF, a minor activated soft fork, which is activated by Bitcoin miners. Now BIP 110, which is the soft fork we've been talking about in this video, this one is designed to be an MASF that turns into a UASF if miners fail to activate. We can see Dathan writing here, BIP 110 is a hybrid between an MASF and a UASF. It activates unconditionally on about September 1st, 2026. I think the reason this is an inexact date is it's going to be going by block height, but approximately that date. Uh, and he goes on to write, but miners can activate the soft fork earlier, which I expect to happen. And then in a separate post, Dathan writes, however, miners have the option of activating the new rules early. If lots of users are running the activation client, this provides an incentive for miners to activate the new rules early. In other words, if they see a lot of Bitcoiners like you and me running the activation client, then this is one way of applying pressure to them. And they may go ahead and do an MASF ahead of our UASF. But it's important that we all start running this client when it's available. We can see the deployment here if we actually look at the GitHub for BIP 110 deployment. We, we propose deployment via modified version of BIP 9 with an unconditional max activation height about nine months from the start of the signaling period, which is approximately December 1st, 2025. This sets max activation height to block 965664, which is about September 1st, 2026, as we were saying. The expiration will be about one year after activation, in other words, about 52,000 blocks. Uh, the deployment will be named reduced data and minor signaling will use bit four. And then here's what's important for the MASF for the minor activated soft fork. If this is going to happen, the activation threshold will be 55%. In other words, 1,109 out of the 2016 blocks in a single difficulty adjustment period contain basically a flag or some signal showing that that particular miner uh, supports this soft fork, in which case that would be activated by the miners. If that doesn't happen, then this thing will automatically activate on September 1st, 2026, and will really be a user activated soft fork. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons, hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video, and let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.